Howdy folks, what is the degree of a region or a face in a plane graph? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Here we've got an example of a plane graph. Recall that a plane graph is a graph drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. Such a graph divides the plane into what are called faces or regions. Since we've got a vertex called F, I'm going to refer to these as regions, not faces. So I've labeled them R1, R2, and R3. Again, these are the sections of the plane that a plane graph graph divides the plane into. Now every region of a plane graph has what's called a boundary. The boundary of a region is the subgraph, the collection of vertices and edges incident with the region. For example, the boundary of the region R1 consists of the vertices A, B, and C and their adjoining edges. This three cycle is the subgraph incident with the region R1. On the other hand, the boundary of the region R2 consists of these vertices and edges here that I'm outlining with my finger. Now, an important concept underlying the idea of the degree of a region that we're going to talk about is that an edge of a plane graph will lie on the boundary of two regions. It'll lie on the boundaries of two regions if the edge lies on a cycle, like this edge here. It lies on a cycle, like this cycle here, and it lies in the boundaries of the regions R2 and R3. However, an edge like this one that doesn't lie on a cycle will be in the boundary of just one region. In this case, this edge is in the boundary of the external region R3. I've got a lesson explaining why that is. I'll leave a link to it in the description. We talk all about it. Pretty important important that you understand that, and I'll assume that you do for the rest of this lesson. So what I'm going to do next is tell you what the degree of a region in a plane graph is, or at least how it's often defined, and then tell you what's kind of wrong with the definition. So here's what it is. Consider the degree of the region R1. So the degree of the region R1. The degree of a region is the number of edges in the boundary of that region. So for the region R1, how many edges are in its boundary? Just one, two, three edges. So the degree of R1 is three. Then how about the degree of the region R2? How many edges are in its boundary? That would be one, two, three, four, five. There are five edges in the boundary of R2, so that is its degree. And then finally, the degree of the region R3, what is that? Well, R3 has one, two, three, four, five, six edges in its boundary, so its degree is six. Now the problem with this definition of degree is I've seen several articles, they present the definition of boundary that I just told you, they present this definition of the degree of a region, and then they claim this that the degree sum of the regions of a plane graph, so if we add up the degrees of all the regions in a graph, in a plane graph, it'll be equal to two times the number of edges in the graph. Let's see if that holds. What have we got? Three plus five plus six, that's 14, all right? And how many edges are in our graph? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 14 should be equal to two times that number of edges, which is eight. Oh wait, that doesn't work because two times eight is 16, 14 isn't equal to 16. Okay, so that's wrong. So what's the problem here? The problem, of course, is that using the definitions we've established, not every edge in a plane graph is going to be counted twice in the boundaries of the regions. Like we said, every edge that's on a cycle will be counted twice because it'll be in the boundaries of two regions, but edges like this one and this one that aren't on a cycle are only gonna be counted once. We've got two of those edges in this case, which is why our count is off by two. 16 minus 14 is two. So the definitions we've used for boundary and degree of a face or region they're fine, but if we use those two definitions, they do not lead to this result. And I've seen several articles that just use both of these definitions and then assert that this result is true, which is a bit of a problem. 
Now this result can be true, we would like it to be true, we just have to do one thing. We either have to change our definition of boundary, or we have to change our definition of the degree of a region in order to make sure that every edge is getting counted twice. Now either way, the sort of change we're making is basically the same. Let's talk about how we would change the definition of the degree of a region. The only problem with our current definition is that these sorts of edges that aren't on cycles are only getting counted once. We want this result that looks really similar to the first theorem of graph theory to be true because it seems so close to being true, which means we gotta find a way to redefine the degree of a region so that each edge is counted twice whether or not it's on a cycle. So how are we gonna do it? Well, I would say the solution is surprisingly simple. I've erased our degree numbers here so we can do them again with our new definition, which is gonna be this. We'll say that the degree of a region is the number of edges encountered in a shortest closed walk along the boundary of the region. So, for example, the region R1, a shortest closed walk along the boundary of this region, so it encounters every edge in the region, could just be going from A to B to C to A. That's a closed walk that encounters every edge in the boundary of R1. In total, uh, the length of that walk is three, so the degree of R1 doesn't change. It is still three. How about R2? The boundary of R2, remember, consists of all of these vertices and edges. What if we go for shortest closed walk that passes through all the edges in the boundary of R2? This is pretty cool. Let me trace it out. We'd go from the vertex A to the vertex C. Then we could go from C to E. Then we could go from E to G. And now you see how we're fixing the problem. When we go for a shortest closed walk passing through all the edges in the boundary of a region, these edges that don't lie on a cycle, we're going to have to pass through them twice. So even though they're not going to appear in two different boundaries, this definition forces them to appear twice in one boundary because we're gonna have to walk this way down the edge and then we're gonna need to walk back the other way to continue going around the boundary. And just like that, how many edges are encountered in this shortest closed walk around the boundary? Or rather, what is the length of the walk? Well, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. It was five before, now it's six. Similar thing's gonna happen with the degree of our region R3. Let me change color here and we'll trace the walk again. So the boundary of R3, it can be kind of weird with the external region. It's the same deal, it's just the vertices and edges that are touching the region R3. So if we trace, let me just point it out with my fingers, it's all of these vertices and edges. So if we go for a shortest closed walk around the boundary of the external region R3, it's gonna look something like this. Oh yeah, we gotta go down this edge and then we gotta come back. So we're counting it again. And then there we go, that's the end of our walk for total length of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, beautiful. Let me write that in blue so we're staying consistent with the colors. And now remember, we had a total of eight edges. So when we add up these degrees, we're hoping that we get two times eight or 16. Three plus six is nine, nine plus seven is 16. Look at that, it works out just fine so I can erase this inequality. And now we've got our result. All right, now let me just explain the definitions we're using one more time. I'm gonna erase this check mark so you don't confuse it with any sort of actual substantial notation. So again, we're saying that the boundary of a region is the same definition we began with. It's the subgraph that is incident with the region, the vertices and edges incident with the region. Like for R2, it's the subgraph consisting of all these vertices and edges. Then we say that the degree of a region or face is the length of a shortest closed walk around that boundary. So for example, R2, the boundary of R2, if we go for a shortest closed walk around that boundary, Boundary, we end up encountering all the edges on a cycle just once. However, the edge that isn't on a cycle, which won't appear in any other boundary, gets counted twice. And so when we define the degree of a region like that, it leads to this result, that if we add up the degrees of all the regions 
in a plane graph, it's going to be two times the number of edges. If instead of changing the definition of the degree of a face, we wanted to change the definition of boundary, we could do that too. We could just redefine boundary to be a shortest closed walk along the edges that are incident with a region. And then we could leave the definition of degree of a face to be the length of that walk or just the number of edges encountered in the walk. Either way, hopefully this helps explain some of the nuance between potential definitions that you might see regarding the degree of a face and boundaries of faces. And if you see this result that doesn't actually seem to follow from the definitions that an article or paper is providing, now you have a better idea of the definitions they should be using. So I hope this video helped you understand all of that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.